Oh, they bring some speed, they bring some energy, some youth and enthusiasm. It's a great experience for them to be playing finals footy. Um, uh, you know, uh, they can play in a variety of positions for us as well, so it gives us a bit more flexibility. Is that versatility the, the biggest key? When you lose a guy like McStay, who's so key to the way your forward set up, having some guys who can maybe move around in case... Yeah, absolutely it is. Uh, it's been our topic of conversation all week, you know. Um, do we go small and play... Kadeen Coleman up there. Um, do we move Marcus Adams out of the back line uh, because he's had experience playing four? He's played forward for us before, and he's played forward in AFL footy. And as a as a waffle player, uh, you know, do we leave Jared Berry there because uh, he, he didn't do a bad job last week? In fact, if he had been able to hold a couple of his marks, he might have kicked two or three goals. So uh, there have been the, the topics of conversation uh, this week, uh, and obviously around the way we structure our forward line up. Um, and I guess you'll get to see tomorrow night what we've decided to do. I guess the flip side of that is that the dogs have also been trying to look at your team and figure out what you're going to do all week as well. Yeah, probably. And they've been a little bit the same lately too, in fairness to them. They lost Josh Bruce, uh, you know, and their forward line's changed a fair bit over the last few weeks. So uh, there's a few unknowns going into the game, which probably makes it a little bit more exciting, I guess. It's been a big topic for us, Fags, I know, trying to figure out who, who you're going to pick. How difficult was it for you guys in relation to the other teams you've had to pick the last few years? Oh yeah, pretty difficult. Um, it's not a problem that we've ever had before. I mean, Eric and Eric Hipwood and Dan McStay have been pillars of our forward line for, ever since I've been at the club, and it's quite unusual to have neither of, neither of them available. So it's not like it's a it's a common problem that we've had to solve before. So yeah, it's in, inspired lots of good discussion, I think, and uh, you know, hopefully we'll get a we'll get a positive outcome with what we've decided to do tomorrow night. So it's a long, long discussion. Yeah, I mean, we always have long discussions at Matt's Committee anyway. I mean, we didn't break any records, not that I would know what the record was, but we, we spent a fair bit of time on Monday, or probably Sunday as well, once we knew that that was going to be the case because we knew early in the piece that Dan wasn't going to play. So Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, uh, there are lots of uh, uh, scheduled discussions and impromptu discussions about what we would, we would do. Those, 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 options, options. Sorry, those options you threw up before about Diddy, about Jared, about uh, even Mark's... They all play out tomorrow night? Um, oh, I don't know. It just depends how the game goes. You know, it depends whether the first thing you choose works or it doesn't. Um, that's pretty much how that would that would roll. I mean, even another left field one is Harris Andrews has played as a forward as a junior. Um, and he can mark the ball, so, um, you know, there's options there. Um, I mean, it's a case of sometimes robbing Peter to pay Paul. I mean, kitty has been sensational in the back line and you've named him up forward. So, um, and, and you say Andrews, all that sort of stuff. How difficult are those decisions when you're taking someone from where they've been great and maybe putting them in a position where you don't know whether or not they'll have the same sort of impact? Oh, they're difficult because they're sort of roll the dice decisions in some ways, although you know that Gideon Coleman's a good forward as well, for instance. Um, so, yeah, there's, there's risk involved, but it's the situation that we're in. So, uh, some way, shape or form, we're going to make a decision that, that could upset the apple cart of the team. Uh, hopefully it doesn't. Does more for them fall on Joe's shoulders this weekend and how do you help him out? Uh, so I don't sort of view it that way, you know, we play a system and we've had, I think if you look at us, we've got, uh, we ha have the highest average number of goal kickers per game, uh, we've had a lot of goals, guys that have kicked 15 or more goals this year, uh, we've never been reliant on any one source uh, and we look forward to that continuing tomorrow night. Do, do you feel um, any extra pressure, Fags, having finished in the top four and, you know, why? Yeah, you, do you as a, you know, looking at the outcome, the potential of the outcome tomorrow night? Um, I haven't actually thought about that at all, Michael, but, you know, if you're referring to the fact that, you know, we've what, played five finals and only won one of them, is that what you're talking about? I think um, both years we've been beaten by both the grand finalists and we're a young developing team. You don't forget two years ago we couldn't get, we couldn't get ourselves off the bottom of the ladder. So, uh, um, you know, part of the process of becoming a great side is, is getting into finals and playing and doing your best to win them and, and, and let those experiences build. So, uh, you know, we played a great team last week in Melbourne who have been on top of the ladder pretty much for all, all of the year and they played exceptionally well. And we've got a, good, a, t a difficult task tomorrow night against the, the Dogs who, until uh, 30 seconds to go in round 23, uh, had been in the top four all season. So uh, we know the job in front of us, but um, win or lose, that, 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 that result doesn't define us or or have you guys describe us as a team that can't play well in finals because I 
I look back at the Richmond team that became that fantastic team of recent times and three years in a row they lost elimination finals and then they didn't make the finals. Um, it's all about, about the learning process and the, and the hardening process and so uh, Either way, whichever way the game goes last night will be a bit, goes tomorrow night will be a better club for it. Hopefully, it's in the positive and we we keep it on going in the, into the season. But but I have a bigger picture, philosophical view on 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 finals than just the immediate result. So it's only a, it's only a week. But what have you learned from last week then? Oh, the biggest learning from last week's game was that if we we for, for whatever reason and we've been very good at this all year, we did not defend the ground well on on. Um, on Saturday night and it was too easy for, for Melbourne to go from one end of the ground to the other, particularly in the first half. And so we've spent a lot of time on that this week and hopefully we'll get an improvement in that tomorrow night. I, I generally find if our defensive game is on then everything else falls into shape. And that's not to ignore the fact that uh, the contested ball game is pretty big against the Dogs, um, but it's a strength of ours as well. So. That's pretty much it. You, you've worked on it. What have you seen to give you hope that it's actually going to change? Oh, well, you, you just train, mate. Like, we practice our defence every week, so it's not like it's any, any different. Uh, we, we just did a little bit more focus on it. Um, and usually what happens, if you bring things into focus a little bit more, usually you get a positive result. Well, that's what I've found with this group. But you've, you've only got, what, you've got two hours on the training track during the week to, to address things. So you, you look at it on the vision on Monday, and certainly they, the boys didn't like what they saw, so there's usually a response from that. And then you practice a few things just to remind, and you know, our meeting we had just now, we talk about it again. And that's what I was getting at, I mean, it's more attitude, body language, the way they feel, talk during the week, probably off the training track. Yeah, it? it's, well, it's connectedness thing to team defence, and it's everyone playing their role. So uh, last week we had blokes that were just slow to react at times, or fellows not playing their roles, and it hurt us. Um, did they do that deliberately? No, no, they didn't. As I said, our team's pretty good at that normally, but it was a, it was a, it was a dirty side to our game on uh, on Saturday night that we weren't happy with. Uh, the decision to uh, leave Cal and Ryan Lester out of your 22. Mm -hmm. Normally, I, I would say normally looking in from the outside, you respect experience. Why have you gone with the young guys instead of those guys who've played so much football? Oh, just because I think those guys can play the roles that we need them to play a little bit better than, than the, the roles that we want played don't suit Ryan and don't suit, suit Cal. So that would be the simple answer to that. Um, Dizzy looked really sore last week's game. Is it, what, what did he have to do this week to prove himself? Well, he had to train Tuesday and Thursday, um, uh, which he did. Um, I wasn't sure if he was going to be right or not, to be honest. Um, but he trained so well yesterday. And I, and I went into yesterday's training session thinking that he, that he wouldn't be right. But he is, so he's playing. So no chance of a late change? There's always chances of late changes on both sides <laughs> uh, in AFL football, if, in case you haven't noticed. Um, but I don't expect that we will. What, do you, what have you made of them, Chris, the, the Bulldogs? I mean, they, you said until the, the last few seconds they were in the top four, but it was a slide out of the top four that was just kept building momentum. Yeah, yeah, I mean... You know, we had some patches this year where we, you know, lost three out of four twice. Um, all teams have them. They just happen to have theirs right at the very end. Um, they showed signs that they were bouncing out of that in the last home and away game. They pushed Port all the way. It was a game that went to the wire, as I know, because I was sitting there watching it, <laughs> um, hoping for a Port to win so that we had that uh, the miracle opportunity to get into the top four. Um, and so, but their form was much better in that game and then they played a good game against Essendon last week so I think the dogs have got their confidence back and you know they'll be giving themselves a really good chance to to win tomorrow night because they'd be looking at it and going well we've been in the top four all year uh, I think we were in it for about eight or nine weeks so uh, or they were in top two for most of the year so they're a very very good side and we know it and we're gonna have to play well much better than we did last week they're kind of conf they're confined to their uh their rooms, other than the, the chance to train, I think they're getting out this afternoon. You guys have had to do that a couple of times this year. Does it have any effect when you're sort of going a bit stir crazy or the players want to get out and they're stuck in their rooms? Yeah. Stuck in their hotel? Yeah, I don't know, because we've done that and we've won and we've lost. So <laughs> it's, it's hard to know. And it affects different people in different ways. It's, it's, it's obviously not ideal, but in another way, sometimes it can galvanise a group too. So it's you know, we had that in Perth when we played Fremantle, for instance. Um, when we played Adelaide over in Adelaide, it was similar. Um, so, 
uh, we've had some good results and some not so good results. I, I can't tell you. Someone should write a book on it. It'd be a really good book to read, I reckon. <laughs> Chris, just on Ryan and Callaghan, I guess, like, how did they take it knowing that if you guys win and keep, keep like, you know, you know, doing well, they may not get back in the team this year and, like, you know, blokes will being... Oh, yeah. Key, you know, key part to this. They haven't been told that they won't get back into the team next year. I mean, if, we, if we're good enough to win tomorrow night, it, n next week's another week and it's a different opponent. And, you know, when, you, when, it, when it comes to the crunch, you pick the team that thinks go, you think is going to beat the team you're playing against. So there's harder decisions made at selection probably than they are during the year. So uh, no, they're fully understanding. They're great team guys. They, they are part of our squad this morning because they're emergencies uh, and their attitude and, and uh, uh, encouragement amongst the group was fantastic, as I would expect, because they're two fine men. Chris, we've been here every day, or pretty much every day this week. There's always been people in the shop buying merchandise. You see a big mural in the centre of town of Charlie Cameron on the side of the building. And that's what, what this team has, has done for, for footy in this city. It's yeah, well, hopefully it has. I mean, nobody was too interested in the Lions and AFL, you know, four years ago, five years ago, when we all first started on this process. And it's just nice to see that you know, that, that we have um, inspired a bit of interest in, in, amongst the local people and hopefully they all turn up tomorrow night and, and shout as loud as they can for us because we definitely feed off, off their energy. Um, so it's been, a, yeah, it's, been a, it's been a great turnaround, but we, you know, we don't want to be satisfied that, with that. We want to keep that going and, and, and build a club that's thereabouts every year and, and hopefully wins a few as well. So um, that's the aim. Just a word on uh, Reese Matheson, Chris, as well. What does it say when a guy who's on the fringe of the team and struggling to break into the midfield uh, is after five years, six years, is still happy to sign on for another two? Well, it tells you how much he loves the club and it tells you how much he loves his teammates, which I think he talked about a lot yesterday, didn't he, when he, uh, when, when he was interviewed about it. Uh, that's Reese. He's genuine like that and that's why the players have got so much respect for him. And, you know, when you make decisions about players that you keep at your club or you let go, one of, for me anyway, one of the big things is what they bring to the table outside of on the field. Uh, how, you know, how they help the culture, how they help the energy, how they help the enthusiasm, the care for each other. Um, Reece is a star in that area and so not only was it an easy decision to extend him because he's a, he's a decent midfielder, uh, he, he's a great clubman as well.